In that same Dallas, before a house modelled on George Washington's own Mount Vernon, but of course a wee bit bigger, another rich Texan and his wife go about their early morning ritual of raising the flag. But Haroldson Lafayette Hunt is the richest Texan of them all. Until recently, he was reputed to be the wealthiest man in the world, but he now seems to have stumbled a little in those particular stakes. A multi-multi-millionaire. Estimates put his worth at between 300 and 500 million pounds, and his weekly income at about half a million pounds. That is over 75,000 pounds a day. Hunt made his money in oil, and still makes it mostly in oil, though he's branched out now into everything from raising cattle to selling real estate, from peddling patent medicines to promoting professional football, from canning foods to building holiday resorts. Yet he permits himself few pleasures. He takes his lunch to work with him every morning in a brown paper bag. He has no luxury yacht, no villa on the Riviera, no penthouse in Acapulco. He sports neither a fleet of private jets nor a string of racehorses. He doesn't even indulge in a Cadillac or a chauffeur. Okay. I drive a medium size, medium priced cars, and I buy ready made suits and even after they get pretty old, well, I get quite fond of them and wear them longer, I think, than most people would. And I don't uh, smoke anymore, haven't for years. And I drink practically no alcoholic beverages whatsoever. Hunt seldom takes a holiday and rarely, in fact, leaves his home city of Dallas. I don't care much for travel. I have traveled some, but uh, uh, it was always for a purpose that I was going somewhere. I made a uh, tour of South America back in 1956, and I uh, got a quite a good insight into each one of the governments down there. And I have a bad reputation, whether rightful or not, of being frugal, and I'm proud of being frugal. But as well as being perhaps the most frugal, the most stingy plutocrat of Texas, H.L. Hunt is probably the most controversial, for he is a fervent advocate of right-wing, some would say reactionary causes. He is against the UN, against the war on poverty, against Medicare, against central government aid of any sort. He would rather Washington didn't rule the United States at all and in his ideal land, votes would be distributed according to the amount of taxes you paid. More than most Texans, even, he is inclined to see communists under every couch and behind every curtain. To hunt, mankind is divided into communists and constructives, his private word for anti-communists. You are either for him or against him. He brooks no halfway position. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, Gail. How are you doing, Good morning. A seemingly gentle man to meet, H.L. Hunt is thought by many to be the most dangerous plutocrat of Texas. Not because of what he stands for himself, but rather because of the people he supports, the people he backs with his wealth. Do you have any important calls? Well, how? Well, I'll, well, I'll get, I'll get to that later. I'll accept them later. Well, I'm all in favor of private initiative, people having the pride of, of accomplishment and self-sufficiency. And uh, so uh, I don't believe, for instance, in this war of, you know, on poverty. I think that is a phony thing. There are people that, well, they, people, people are put on the dole, and also they will hardly consider taking, many of them, consider taking a job because that would interfere with their relief payments. There is no other country in the United States that has any chance to stop communism, except the United States. It's the only country in the world that can halt it and turn it back. 
And endeavouring to turn that tide is how H.L. Hunt spends most of his day and most of his wealth. He churns out letters by the thousand to the editors of every conceivable cornball country hit newspaper in America. He syndicates a weekly column and writes and publishes paperbacks on his views. His staff copy without questioning every telegram or letter he has sent, every article or story that is written about him, and few visitors can escape his office without a bundle of his bum, without a load of his literature. His main propaganda weapon is a radio program called Lifeline, which is carried daily by over 400 stations the length and breadth of America. Its message is one of imminent disaster facing the United States from the enemy within, particularly from the enemy within the federal heartland at Washington. It is a familiar message, of course, among American right-wingers, and a favourite with many of his fellow Texan plutocrats. But during the last two years, H.L. Hunt has added another emotive missile to his armoury. His league of so-called youth freedom speakers, engaging young teenagers drilled to deliver three-minute bursts of his propaganda to rotary clubs and Bible classes. Many people in the United States really don't believe that communism is a serious threat. Well, these people are in for a big shock because the communists have every intention of doing exactly what they've said they'll do. And they do not hesitate to use force and violence any time they think that it will further their cause. Now, I don't pretend to know all the answers, but I do know that it is our duty to get out and warn others of the serious threat that we are facing. We have got to get out and tell others of the subversive movements that are going on right here under our very own noses. It's time to do away with this attitude. Oh, it can't happen here. Will communists bury us? Will we face firing squads as in Cuba and will our little bitty children become slaves? Ladies and gentlemen, the answer rests in the hands of you and others like you. Thank you. These mercies bless and grant that we may feast in fellowship with thee. Amen. Almost 80, Hunt has, or so it seems, just three passions left in life. Making money, combating communism, and enjoying his large family. His first wife bore him four sons and a daughter, all multimillionaires now in their own right, and his present wife has three daughters and a son, on each of whom he is reputed to have settled a hundred million dollars. It is time for a lifetime. Keller, a 1964 graduate of A&M, will succeed Jake Helms. Keller was a standout quarterback at Terrell High School, that is king of the Texas class around the world. Every leftist phrase and cliche of the past half century now has the hollow ring of mythology. This is Freedom Talk number 53. Printed copies are available at the rate of free for 25 cents from Lifeline, Dallas, Texas, 75206. I'll be back after this message from our sponsor. Been wanting a little more for your money in a new car? Then you'll enjoy trading for a new 1968 Plymouth at Southwest Chrysler Plymouth. But just as a family dinner party doesn't deter Hunt from keeping up with his own propaganda, so his daughters entertain him with patriotic songs of their own composing. We like the United States of America. We like the way we all live without fear. We like to vote for our choice, speak our mind, raise our voice. Yes, we like it here. We'd like to climb to the top of a mountain so high, lift our heads to the sky and say how grateful am I for the way that we're living, working and giving, and helping the land we hold dear. Yes, I like it, I like it, we like it here. Oh. <laughs> That's all right. How about another duet? Yeah, that'd be all right. You want me to hunt myself to sing? Okay. You said you thought of Miss Miller. Miller's safe. We don't Can need any music. No, we don't okay. need music. Okay. To a mansion in the city came a couple old and gray. 
to see their son who'd left them years before. We are just plain folks, your mother and me, just plain folks like our own folks used to be. As our presence seems to grieve you, we will go away and leave you. We are sadly out of place here, cause we're just plain folks. <laughs>